seven days sports tv here salute to the mighty ldbc lions den basketball community in this case smash the like button hit the subscribe also hit the notification bell so be notified when i drop a new video if you're digging the video go ahead and share the video all right so russell westbrook news <clears throat> uh first and foremost um it's being widely reported that russell westbrook has interest from a few nba teams who are interested in russell westbrook in the buyout westbrook was traded to the utah jazz and uh the jazz have no interest in playing russell westbrook uh they just can't run the risk of russell westbrook messing up their plans <clears throat> and getting more wins than they need to have the jazz are clearly tanking uh because they have a bunch of draft picks uh, after trading away all their star players they're loaded with draft picks and they're trying to position themselves to get uh, the best young talent available. So they have no interest in playing Russ. So they, the Jazz plan to buy out Russell Westbrook. They've given Russ permission to speak to teams that are interested in him. And to my knowledge, he's spoken to the Clippers, uh, the Miami Heat, Chicago Bulls, and I think someone else, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let's talk about what's best for Russ. I know my brother Ticket TV has already reported that Russ will be signing with the Clippers. Okay. And I'm rocking with Ticket. Um, Ticket got the inside scoop. So Russ probably will be signing with the tickets. I mean, with the, I said with the tickets, but with the uh, Clippers. So if that's the case, we know Paul George and uh, Morris have been very openly, vocally uh, um, recruiting Russell Westbrook. Uh, the Clippers have traded away John Wall and traded away. Uh, Reggie Jackson, so they're shorthanded at the point guard position. So um, we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see uh, what the Clippers uh, do with Russ. I think Russ could be an impactful player for the Clippers. Russ wants to start, and I think uh, to the reports that are coming out, the only way Russ uh, will sign there is if he's a starter. Uh, he don't want to be coming off the bench. Uh, his time in L.A., with the Lakers was uh, kind of hindered Russ's career. Uh, it was supposed to be a situation um, that would work out for everybody, but, you know, it's a lot of politics involved, a lot of shenanigans, a lot of people um, leaking things to the media, uh, using Russell Westbrook as a scapegoat over there in L.A., trying to keep the attention off of the obvious problems in L.A. and put them all on Russ. Um, so Russ now is in a better position, but he don't have to tolerate and put up with that kind of nonsense. So let's look at some um, some stats and stuff here and see what the best uh, scenario would be. Let's look at the East. The Eastern Conference standings, right now you have the Boston Celtics at number one, the Milwaukee Bucks at number two, a half game behind the Boston Celtics. The Bucks are currently on a 12-game winning streak. Salute to my Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis was hurt yesterday. Uh, only He got hurt early in the game, scored two points, and was taken out of the game with a sprained right wrist, I'm sure Giannis will be fine. Everything's looking optimistic about that. Giannis is a freak of nature. He tends to recover very fastly, very quickly from injury. So I'm not too concerned about that with Giannis. Um, Philly are at uh, number three. Cleveland Cavaliers at four. Brooklyn Nets at number five. Still looking good as a team even though they traded away all their big-name stars. They got a lot of young talent over there in Brooklyn, so they still a threat. The New York Knickerbockers, um, the Miami Heat at seven. Atlanta Hawks are just trash, man. They're eight. Washington Wizards at nine. Uh, Toronto Raptors at 10. Chicago Bulls are currently out of the play-in. Now, the Chicago Bulls at 11 right now could definitely use Russell Westbrook. Um, they have some problems at point guard. Lonzo Ball is still injured. They don't know if they ever going to get him back. Um, so Chicago Bulls definitely could have used Westbrook yesterday against the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and they didn't have DeMond DeRozan yesterday either. Um, so that's an interesting look right there. But I think Russ could definitely help out the Chicago Bulls. But getting out of the East is going to be very, very hard. Um you know, this year with the Bucks, Celtics, and the Philadelphia 76ers out there. It's going to be very hard for anybody to get out of the East. If you go to the West, <clears throat> you have the Denver Nuggets. 
um, the number one team out west. Um, and, you know, you have uh, Nikola Jokic running that squad. Um, I would like to see some pressure be put on Nikola Jokic to uh, win uh, a championship, the same pressure they put upon Giannis. Um, Giannis was a back-to-back MVP, and then all of a sudden the next following year, unanimously the media decided that they were going to uh, take the kid gloves off of Giannis and start uh, demanding that Giannis win. They said that, you know, Giannis was uh, not, shouldn't be getting any more MVPs until he wins a championship, until he stops folding in the playoffs is what they were saying in the media. Unanimously, that's what everybody said. And Giannis, you know what he did? He won a championship, okay? I want to see the same pressure put on Nikola Jokic. I don't know why this man is even in consideration to be a three-time MVP, something that only few players, the greatest players in NBA history have accomplished. I don't know why he would be getting even in consideration for this when he hasn't gotten it done in the playoffs. I don't care what he's doing in the regular season because if that's the case, Michael Jordan should have won MVP every single year. Uh, LeBron James probably should have won way more than he won, okay? So, I mean, Shaq should have won way more than he won. So why is Nikola Jokic getting this special treatment? I have no idea. Memphis Grizzlies, uh, young team, dangerous, but, you know, Memphis, uh, you know, has some disciplinary problems. I don't trust them in the playoffs. You got uh, the Sacramento Kings, a uh, great young team being coached by Mike Brown. Salute to him. Got this team in the third spot in the West right now, playing phenomenal basketball. The L.A. Clippers at number four. Now, Clippers are interested in Russ. Um the Clippers uh, could definitely use Russ, and um, and Russ will be he can it'd be easy for Russ to go to the Clippers because he already got a house out in L.A. He ain't got to move his family around and stuff like that. Um, you know, right now they're still sharing um, locations with the Lakers, so it could be easy transition for Russ to go play for the Clippers. And I think he can help the Clippers. Um, the hate for Russ is still going to be on ten if he goes to the Clippers because he's still in L.A., still going to get a lot of attention, and people want to see Russ fail for whatever reason. I don't know what their fascination is with seeing Russ fail. I don't get it, but that's what they're going to do, all right? Um, let me go back to the East. Oh, the Lakers are down here. Where are the Lakers at? 11, 12, 13. Lakers are in 13th spot, but out West, those games are separated by a few games. They could easily go on the run and be in the play-in or the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? They could easily do that if they go on the run. But I don't trust the Lakers to be able to go on the run and without messing it up. Just don't trust it. They got too much inner turmoil and different things going on over there in L.A. that nobody wants to really talk about. Uh, they want to pretend like it was all peaches and cream. But now with the rust is gone, you see how quickly they can shift the gears towards A.D. and Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham just got there, right? Phenomenal assistant coach for the Bucks, And now all of a sudden people are already giving him nicknames, uh, disrespecting them. This is what happens when you align yourself with, with LeBron James. Anybody that stand next to this guy, start getting dumped at. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that stand next to this guy, everybody. The last Laker coach, Mike Brown, Eric Spolstra, everybody, anybody that stand next to LeBron James is going to get some serious heat out of nowhere. Right? And LeBron team be leaking out nonsense to the media manipulating the media, manipulating the headlines, taking the pressure off of them and putting it on everybody else. That's what they did the whole time Russ was there. Y'all know it. No need to lie about it. Let's go back to the East real quickly. Talk about <clears throat> um, – there was another team in the East that I want to talk about. Um, Miami Heat. Yeah, uh, all right. So the Miami Heat are, are seven. The Miami Heat uh, – Russ could, could do wonders with the Miami Heat. I, I think that um, – the Miami Heat are in the play-in right now. They have a potential chance to go up to that sixth or fifth spot if Brooklyn falls a little bit and if the Knicks fall, which they probably will. The Miami Heat can easily jump into that sixth spot or fifth spot in the East. Um, I think Russell Westbrook is better than what the Miami Heat current option is. Currently, the, uh, the Miami Heat have uh, Kyle Lowry. Uh, I think he's injured right now. But Kyle Lowry for this season is averaging – 12 points a game, uh, five assists, shooting 39% from the field, 33% from the three, all right? 
So he's giving you 12 points a game and five assists, basically. That's the production of Kyle Lowry. He was a good, he's a good player, but you know, he's older right now. He's like 36 years old or something like that. Kyle Lowry is not what he used to be. Uh, neither is Russ, but Russ is still more impactful uh, than Kyle Lowry. Let's look at Russ's numbers compared to Kyle Lowry. Now, these are numbers for Russ coming off of the bench for the Lakers. Kyle Lowry was a starter. Russ is averaging almost 16 points a game, uh, 7.5 assists, shooting 41% from the field, 29% from three, uh, 65% from the free throw line, blah, blah, blah. So basically, Russ is giving you about 16 points a game, 7.5 assists, um, and he's shooting a better percentage than Kyle Lowry, all right? But everybody will tell you that Russ uh, is so trash and he can't shoot. He Westbrook. You never hear nobody say this stuff about Kyle Lowry. And he shoot worse than Russ. And this is why I'll be trying to tell y'all, like, everything Russ does that's negative is always heightened. It's always extra put on it. Like, if Russ has two turnovers um, and, and they say, oh, man, look at Russ with another turnover. Cause, because you're going into the game – expecting Russ to do something that you can criticize because you got used to him being your scapegoat. And I know all about that. I know how people do, right? So you want your scapegoat to do anything wrong, you heighten it, right? So Russ getting two turnovers is like uh, somebody else getting eight turnovers. Russ get four turnovers is like somebody else having 16 turnovers. See what I'm saying? It's like everything is heightened with Russell Westbrook, you know? Uh, so Russ uh, shoots an air ball. Everybody talk about it. It's going to be on every – uh, morning show showing highlight reel bloopers of Russ shooting the air ball. Meanwhile, they won't show you the air ball that LeBron James shot from the three point line. Two up. They won't show you the air ball the AD shot. They uh, they won't show you um, uh, uh, the shot that uh, some other guy Walker on the Lakers uh, shot the ball and it went behind the rim and all. They won't say none of this stuff. They won't show you none of that because their agenda is not to make those guys look bad. The agenda the agenda for the media. Right now, because they don't like Russ, is to manipulate the public into uh, vilifying Russell Westbrook and making you think this guy is the worst player in NBA history or some nonsense like that when it's, it's, it's nothing but lies. The man is giving you these numbers off the bench. Last year, he gave the Lakers 18 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, or, or eight rebounds, eight assists, something like that. Great numbers, but th that wasn't appreciated. All right, so I think. As a starter, Russ can still help a team um, like the Clippers. You know you're going to get some turnovers with Russ, but so what? You're going to get those turnovers with Trey Young as well. You're going to get those turnovers with James Harden as well, right? I did a whole video of breaking down that turnover myth with Westbrook, okay? So, like I said, uh, Russ with the Clippers will be phenomenal. Maybe finally, um, finally, you'll be able to see – the Clippers versus the Lakers in the playoffs uh, about four years ago. That was the talk of the town. That's all everybody wanted to see, and it never actually happened because the Clippers was always injured, Kawhi injured, the Lakers didn't make it. It was always something going on with those guys. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. What's the best fit for Russell Westbrook? 78 Sports TV, salute to the mighty LDBC. I'm up out of here. Deuces.